Hey, this is uh, Brad from Rigging Dojo. I just wanted to go through a quick uh, iRigging demo. We had a question on Facebook about uh, how to rig up a game, a uh, cartoony iRig for a game that could export to Unity. And um, the problem was the eyes were already shaped in an oval. So if your, your geometry isn't starting out as a sphere, it can be harder to get the, uh, the rig to follow along. And um, this is a, just a simple concept rig, so this isn't fully fleshed out. But you can see that we've got um, you know, we've got some weighted joints here. And um, let me go through the breakdown for this. So I took the eyeball and I duplicated it off to create a second surface, which is this surface here. And I went in and selected an isoparm in the middle. And this is a NURB surface. Um, you know, this this could be a polygon as well, but NURBs give us a, a nice surface to slide stuff on. And um, I went in and did a um, duplicate surface curves. And uh, with that isoparm selected, it gave me a curve that also has a uh, isoparm value. And so we can move that. Um, value all the way down and all the way back up. And we know that 0.5 is exactly halfway, so that closes the eye. And these guys are just, um, they have a, a path constraint, motion path. Um, and, you know, we can move them along the path as well if we need to position them. And I only did three, three bones here because uh, I didn't need to set up the whole thing, but obviously, you know, you could put an additional one at the corners and you'd be able to have a nice uh, balanced rig. The other thing I did was I simply constrained the orientation to aim at the center of the eyeball so that as the lid closes, if you watch the, um, if you watch the, the Z, I'll go ahead and switch to object. So X is aiming down. So it just aims, and it, um, this is a little over dramatic, but it's basically rotating the the the, the skin weights. So if we watch the, um, you can kind of see it bulge out a little bit when it blinks. So um, it just lets it keep from penetrating into the eye. And that's just an aim constraint. Of course, you could, you know, offset it a little bit if you want to. There we go. So you can create more, you know, more or less aim to kind of keep the eye in shape there. But we don't want it to dip in, so you know, that's what that's for. The aim is just helping keep it from penetrating the eye. And it helps bunch up the bunch up the lid when it gets to the top. So um, again, you can take that as far as you want. You can um, obviously these are directly skinned, but um, ideally you'd have another uh, another joint under this uh, under this node, so you can animate them separately, of course. And this is just giving us a an overall blink. And then you can go ahead and animate the offset from there. Um, you could also break this into three curves so that each curve gives you an open close, and then you have left, right. Um, and the, the reason that I wanted to, to approach it with a, a curve and motion path is that if your eye changes, the eye shape changes, um, or you're trying to do a, uh, a, a deforming squash stretch eye, um, you know, we could go ahead and group this together with the lattice. And now when I deform the lattice, oops, I want to grab the eye.
have a lattice to maintain. That's how they, okay, so now you can see that the lattice shape is deforming our surface on top of the uh, the eyelid. So as we move the, the closer node up and down in here, it's going to deform within that shape. We can adjust the uh, the order, but you get the idea. At least with the um, with the surface being its own shape that then drives the rest of the rig, we can we can do things like scale it up or change the um, change the size of your eyeball. You can use this this rig to uh, you know apply it to different characters, and since everything's driven from that surface, you know that. You know, if you have to retarget, you know that the distance is still going to be the same, no matter if it's scaled tiny or if it's scaled big. It's going to move the same distance each time, which makes it really nice for copying and, and retargeting animation from uh, surface to surface. And of course, you can move it in and out. Go back. Uh, the other thing you have control over is the curve. So if you really wanted to go in and, and do something else with the curve, you can translate it up and down. Uh, you can scale the curve as well, and that's going to still maintain its offset. So we've got a couple layers of transformation that we can uh, we can do to control the whole eyelid. And then of course you could uh, go in and grab the control points and cluster those. And the cluster is going to let you shape the eyeball. Or you could feed it in as a blend shape or whatever. So, Anyway, hopefully this gives you guys some ideas on how to play with um, creating a, a reusable, um, stable eyelid rig for a cartoon character that um, might already have the, uh, the eye sculpted into um, a deformed surface. And then it lets you still do squash and stretch um, with, the, with the overall eye. So there you go. Hopefully that helps out some people and uh, enjoy the rig tip.